Well, this is my duffel bag. Isn't it gorgeous? Well, at the age of 12, I thought this was the thing. Have you ever been a teen or a tween and you saw that one thing that you had to have and you knew you just had to get it? Maybe you saw it in a catalog or in a magazine or online or in a store. And when you saw that thing, you knew you had to have it. Well, at the age of 12, the stuffle bag was it for me. I was a cheerleader, I was on the track team, and I knew everything that was gonna go in this bag. And when I put it over my shoulder, I radiated with confidence. I was it. Well, I grew up in a small town in Oklahoma. We had a beautiful ranch. And my mom and my dad and my grandparents on both sides of my family were there. And our cousins, we had chickens and hogs and ducks and cattle. And there was a horse here and there and dogs and cats. And everything that I loved was right there in my small town community. And I radiated with confidence. I had a loving grandmother. She was a strong woman of God and she loved the Lord. She always told me that I could reach up, always reach up to him. And at times when she wasn't there and I couldn't reach up to her, I could always reach up to him. She loved scripture and she'd quote Philippians. I am convinced and confident of this thing, that he who began a good work in you will be faithful to perfect it and to bring it to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. She told me that I could always reach up and find my confidence in God to get through any situation. Well, one day when I was 12, it was the perfect day. My mommy and daddy and I got up that morning. We had a delicious breakfast. We played some of our favorite songs. There was always music playing in our home. And my mom and I that day, we went out and we went for a walk and we sang songs and we just had so much fun. We picked apples from our apple tree. And we played games and we just laughed. It was the perfect day. Came home that night, had dinner, and I was settling into bed. And I was just thinking about how blessed I was and how things were going so great in my life. And I had a big game coming up on Monday and I was cheering. I was already planning to be part of the track meet. Everything was going so great. Well, all of a sudden, my mom burst through my door. She said, get up, grab everything you can. We're leaving this house and I don't know if we'll ever be able to come back. I'm like, what? I'm 12 years old. I'm like, what are you doing in my room first off? <laughs> and then I was like, what? What are you talking about? I've never seen my mommy look like that before. She said, get up, grab everything you can. We're leaving this house right now and I don't know if we'll ever be able to come back. I was shocked. You ever had the rug pulled right out from underneath you? You ever been just completely blindsided? You ever had the wind just knocked out of your lungs? Well, that was me. But I trusted my mom. So I picked up my duffel bag. I started to pack everything that I could. And when this bag was completely full, I grabbed everything that my 12 year old arms could grab. And we left my home. We left that home that I loved so much. And we went from family members' houses to the YWCA to battered women's shelters. You see, that day, my mommy had made the difficult decision to stand up, to stand up against domestic violence. She made the decision that she was gonna stand up to my daddy on that otherwise perfect day where I thought everything was great. My mommy had made the tough decision to stand up for herself and for me. We went from luxury and comfort to confusion and chaos. We went from beauty and abundance to brokenness and coldness. And some days and cold nights, all I had was this bag to hold on to. So at some point I realized that, you know what, it wasn't just my story, it was my mom's too. And I said, mommy, how in the world did you find the confidence to stand up and to do what you had to do. How did you get the courage to do it? And my mommy told me a story about her very own mom. Courage comes from the confidence that you desire. Courage comes from the confidence that you desire. My grandma Alma was a very skilled writer. She was very good at writing English. 
She was skilled at asking questions and she was also a good listener. And her dream was to work for a large newspaper as a reporter. And she'd often write stories about things happening in the community. So one day she sees an ad in the paper for a job for a writer at the paper. And she said, this is my chance. So she was excited and she goes into the newspaper office and she has her samples of her work. She's all dressed up and she goes in and says, I'm here to apply for the job. And the manager of that publication, he looked over her work and he said, wow, Miss Alma, that was her name, Alma. Miss Alma, your work is really good. You're a skilled writer. And he said, I would love to give you a job. But he said, I won't give the job to a woman like you. You see, my grandmother, being black and Native American, wasn't permitted to write for the paper in town. So my grandmother goes home and she decides she's gonna find another way. She decided to show up. She starts to write articles and she calls people and gathers stories and reports on things happening in the community. She writes about businesses that were opening, of sporting events, of new births, and she shares those stories throughout the community. She would hand write the articles, get carbon paper and copy them off, and then ask family and friends to deliver them throughout the community. She chose to show up for the businesses, for the sporting events, for the teams, for the wins, for the losses that otherwise wouldn't have been reported. Well, one day she gets a call and it's from the publisher of the newspaper in town. He wants her to come in for a meeting. Now by this time, my grandmother had developed a really large following, and this was long before Instagram. <laughs> but she tells the publisher, she's like, okay, I'll give you a meeting, I'll come in. So she goes into the office and the publisher says, Miss Alma, first off, I wanna to apologize to you. He said, I know my manager didn't give you the job that you'd wanted. He said, I didn't invite you back in here to give you that job. He said, but what I did wanna do is offer you a position as a columnist. We want you to have your own section of the newspaper to share stories of the community as you see fit. You have brought stories out that we otherwise would have never covered, and we thank you for that. And my grandma Alma became the first woman of color to have her own section and column of the newspaper in our town. She chose to show up. Well, my mom and dad's divorce finally was finalized and we went through some uh, transitions and we had visitation set up and I was able to spend some time with my daddy. And I was still heartbroken. I was still in so much pain and I was angry and bitter. But I wanted to talk to my daddy and understand how could he do this? How could he hurt us? Why would he have destroyed so many of my dreams and the things that I thought was certain? So I sat down with my daddy and he said, I'm sorry, I've asked your mom for forgiveness and I'm asking you to forgive me as well. He said, I let my anger get the best of me and I was not living out the godly life and the purpose that I was destined to live out. He said, although I've made some mistakes in my past, those mistakes won't define my future. He said, I need to grow up. I've got to grow up and into the man that God has destined me to be. I have to grow up and into the purpose that God has set in place for me. Confidence comes from not always being right, but having the courage from not fearing being wrong. My daddy had to grow up. I'm grateful for the powerful examples of three godly, confident women, and one humble, repentant, godly man. And so it was with that confidence that I reconnected with a friend back in 2018. He owned a TV production studio, and we started talking about ideas of ways to bring to the stage powerful stories of transformation, of inspiration, bringing educators and authors and leaders to the stage to share their unique messages with the world. We knew that we had an idea that could create life change. And from those conversations came Speak Up, sharing unique messages and stories with the world. Speak Up. 
Confidence is a journey, not a destination. Did you know that all the confidence you need is right inside you? All you have to do is reach out. He who began a good work in you will be faithful to bring it to completion. Reach out. What injustices are you seeing in this world that you need to stand up to? Where can you take a stand and support someone who may not have an advocate to be there to stand up for them? Stand up. Show up. Sometimes all we have to do is be present, to make our presence known, to be in the room, to be there, to show up for someone who otherwise wouldn't have anyone to represent them, to be there with them, to show them some support. Show up. And before we think that it's all about us and that we're everything, we also have to remember we have to continue to grow, to grow up, to grow into our purpose, to into that person that we're destined to become, that we can all grow. You have a unique voice. You have a message. You have something to share with the world and only you can share it. It is your story. You can speak up. So my mommy and daddy, were together with me for some of the most important moments of my life. They managed to forgive each other. They managed to also rekindle a friendship. They had known each other since they were little kids and they were able to do that. My mom and dad were there with me at my high school graduation. They were there at my college graduation. And when I crossed the stage for graduate school, my mommy and daddy were there. They were there on my wedding day, standing by my side. And it was my mom who was at the home of my dad, surrounded with family and friends, when my daddy went home to be with the Lord. Godly confidence can transform lives. It can help us work through situations that we never thought possible. It can propel us to forgive, to heal wounds, and to become the person that we're destined to be. One of the stingiest symbols is a closed fist. It's cold, it's hard, it's distant. But when you reach up, stand up, show up, grow up, speak up. You open your hands to generosity. You can serve others. You can serve, you can support, you can encourage when you open your hand and show your confidence. Confidence isn't in a bag. It's not what you put in a bag or sling over your shoulder, but it's in every single one of you. You have the godly confidence in you to achieve anything that you would purpose to do. You absolutely can achieve all that you dream that you would. Reach up. Stand up, show up, grow up, speak up. I'm Taylor Cole Longacre. Remain confident.